Hello, this is part two of an interview with John Lennon, Michael Jackson and Benjamin Toulouse husband who passed away six months ago. Hope you enjoyed part one and it's called Michael Jackson and John Lennon Speak from Heaven, part one. If you haven't watched it and it'd be helpful if you watched it before you watch this. And uh, this is part two, so we're starting. We've got 10 questions here. And uh, uh, so uh, the Saints, the three of them say hello to Lou. Good to be talking and to you. Uh, we had about an hour between part one and this part here, and we've come back to do part two now. Thank you to you, Gray. It's Matthew, actually, it's nine months tomorrow that Ben has passed away now. So nine months. It's, it's no longer it's nine months, time flies. Nine months away uh, ago. Yeah. yeah, nine months ago. Yeah, so, so my first question is to John. John, how does one practically share in the suffering of Jesus in their daily life? So... When you're answering this question, I want you to consider people watching from her and people that might be listening in heaven as well. So uh, one way to uh, share in the practical, everyday suffering of Christ is to meditate on uh, the way that Jesus feels. Uh, meditate's another word for think or consume the way Jesus feels. And um, one way to understand how Jesus is feeling or what he's thinking about things is to have conversation with him. So you can spend uh, time talking to Jesus mm -hmm. in your mind. Um, if, uh, if you're on earth and you haven't got that ability to speak back and forth to Jesus, uh, Matthew's got a book called How to Hear God's Voice, and you can look up How to Hear God's Voice on Amazon under Matthew Robert Payne, and that book will teach you how to uh, hear the voice of Jesus. So one way uh, that uh, you can... <clears throat> are two ways that we've just discussed that uh, you can meditate on the sufferings of Jesus is one way to think about it uh, and understand how Jesus is thinking about all the suffering people in the world and uh, his church gone astray. And secondly, speak to Jesus about it and uh, ask Jesus questions and ask him informed questions. Uh, you can ask him, uh, you know, what he, he thinks about certain things and Ask him uh, what to post on your Facebook to actively uh, make a difference. You know that uh, many people, when something really bad happens uh, to a person, like someone loses a relative or, or someone's dying of cancer or something, people are afraid to talk about that subject. They're afraid to talk about the divorce or the fact that a mother's their mother died of cancer and they sort of distance themselves because they feel uncomfortable about talking about that situation or that thing that's happened in a person's life. That's actually the opposite of what a person who goes through something needs. A person who goes through something needs you to be normal with them, needs you to love them and talk to them like a normal person. They don't need to be talking about the thing that they suffered, but it'd help if you actually tried to talk about it. Um, and that's how Jesus feels about the world and the suffering in the world. Uh, he'd feel a whole lot better if you talked to him about it and uh, spoke to uh, him about the things that uh, he's sad about. And um, rather than hearing it from me, uh, in heaven if you're listening rather than hearing it from me it's best if uh when you meet a uh, jesus 
once a week uh, for two hours like everyone does. Uh, ask him about the way that he suffers. Ask him about his feelings and ask, ask him, uh, can the Holy Spirit share with you uh, other things that he's feeling? Uh, if you're on earth, learn how to speak to Jesus and uh, and uh, ask him about it. Uh, you could even search uh, understanding the sufferings of Christ uh, on Amazon and possibly find a book or two about uh, that subject. Um, but first of all, before you make any change, you've got to want to make a difference. You're going to want to uh, make an impact. You're going to want to change. You're going to want to change the way that uh, you're living your life. And um, uh, Matthew has been meditating the verse. Meditating the verse means he's been thinking about the verse for a long time. Uh, These people honour me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me, Jesus says. And uh, Matthew finds it uh, very hard to go into a church and lift his hands up and worship God with a congregation who are disobeying him, with a congregation that don't understand his teachings, don't understand his heart, don't understand Jesus. They, they're they worshipping someone they don't even know. And uh, Matthew finds that hard. And uh, Jesus would uh, be really happy uh, for the people in heaven and the people on earth to really come to know him and uh, not to have anything to hide, anything that he feels he needs to hide from you, but his life and his feelings to be an open book. Thank you, John. I was just thinking that a lot of the emphasis has been on the suffering of Jesus. Where does God fit in in this old scenario, how can God be carried along in the journey as well? Uh, well, God suffers just the same as Jesus does. And uh, and uh, uh, like any father, if his son is suffering, it would uh, cause the father anguish. But just, uh, just uh, take on board everything. <coughs> We've said about the sufferings of Christ and entering the sufferings of Christ. And you can apply that to the same as how the uh, father suffers. Uh, The father uh, is uh, not mentioned a lot by Matthew because Matthew's uh, very close uh, to Jesus, but he does have a relationship with the father. The father is really upset. Uh, the, The father, if... If you um, contemplate the God that uh, wiped out Noah, uh, uh, wiped out the world in Noah's day, the angry God or the same God who destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah or uh, the same God who who uh, had the Israelites wipe out certain races, this uh, angry, vengeful, upset God, uh, that's the sort of feeling God's feeling at the moment. And uh, he's really upset uh, with the church, and uh, but not many people understand him at that level. Um, uh, many people misunderstand that uh, the church and uh, the body of Christ is the apple of God's eye, and they, they misapply uh, justice. Uh, there is no justice being done on earth, and God's a God of justice. And uh, uh, the 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 modern church really upsets him that uh, so many Christians aren't obeying his son, and uh, he sent his son to come and teach the world. And the world uh, of Christians take the crucifixion and accept themselves being saved by the blood of Jesus, but then don't pay attention to what Jesus taught and have no interest in what Jesus taught and applying that in their life. So uh, so many Christians lack love for their fellow human beings and 
someone like uh, Buddhists actually love in a, a more complete way than most Christians. And um, so uh, God uh, is uh, very upset and very sad and depressed. And uh, as you minister your heart uh, to the sun, you can actually tap into God and uh, minister to his heart too. Oh, thank you. That's very beautiful because I don't want Father God to feel that we are missing him out in all of the questions that the focus has been on the son, Jesus. But the, what you've just said now makes sense that we are ministering to Jesus in in another way you're ministering to God as well at the same time. So what should be our attitude then as Christians to Christ's suffering? All right, so uh, first of all, most Christians don't understand that Christ suffers. Uh, they, they, uh, they think uh, if you ask them about Christ's suffering, they'd only talk about the cross. They wouldn't understand that Christ was upset about all the people he couldn't heal. He was upset about the false teaching of the Pharisees. He was upset that the people were blind. Um, and uh, he was upset that people didn't understand him or didn't take the time to understand him. So... Uh, Jesus had uh, natural suffering uh, in his own life before the cross. And uh, since he's died, uh, he's been watching on and uh, he's been suffering. Um, so what was the question again? Now, what should be our attitude overall to suffering of Christ? Yeah, should we so, rejoice? So... Uh, no, certainly not rejoice. Uh, uh, your attitude should be one of empathy and understanding, but in order to get empathy and understanding, you've got to understand that he suffers. And uh, like I said, uh, in part one, uh, you know, the world is full of workers who, you know, a whole lot of uh, females and males uh, with pickaxes uh, hitting rock all day and chipping away at a rock, getting cobalt that's needed in every mobile phone. Uh, there's no easy way of doing it, and it's just modern-day slavery on low wages uh, doing that. Uh, there's all the workers in China who work for low wages and do, like, 20-hour days and... That they've actually got nets around the buildings to catch people that suicide, that jump off the buildings. Workers in those buildings uh, don't jump because there's actually nets to uh, uh, to catch them. Um, so the, the work life is so horrendous for these people that they're inclined to suicide to break out of the cycle. We've got all the women who are forcibly being um, being uh, uh, used in prostitution. Uh, we've got um, all the young children uh, who are being sexually abused uh, by their father each day uh, or their stepfather. Um, there's there's so many forms of slavery. We've got all the young uh, uh, black males growing up in America or in the inner cities of Chicago and stuff being uh, played rap music and thinking that the only way to fame is to become a rap singer uh, or, or to deal drugs. And so many kids committing crime and going into jail and in and out of jail and being in and out of jail all their life or the the 40% of mothers uh, in America that are single mothers and the children growing up without fathers. There's so much suffering in the world and all of the suffering in the world is the way that Jesus suffers. And uh, Jesus uh, loves everyone and 
he doesn't just love uh, Christians. He loves everyone. Uh, he loves everyone in the world. And uh, there's so many uh, girls and, and guys who were sexually abused and had their control taken away and uh, wanted some power. So they delved into witchcraft and become witches. There's so many witches and warlocks that Jesus really wants to save. And he really wants a Christian to touch them and be a light to them. Uh, there's so many people in darkness, traveling in darkness and practicing darkness uh, that uh, he wants Christians to go into that world and bring the light and bring love and bring understanding and compassion and empathy. Uh, so um, you don't have, you don't uh, get excited about Jesus suffering it'd be good for you to empathize and have compassion on him and ask him how you can change the world. Thank you, John. This next question is for Benjamin. How does sharing in Christ's suffering impact a believer's understanding of their own suffering? Uh, once you get an understanding of uh, how Christ suffers every day in heaven and uh, the sufferings of Christ on earth. It gives you better understanding of uh, your own suffering. Um, when you get a picture or a true uh, understanding of uh, how Jesus struggles and how other people are struggling, on the earth and how he's aware of that, it, it allows you to put your own suffering uh, in context and uh, allows you uh, to cope better. I uh, went through uh, some real issues on earth and I had a painful life and a life of suffering, uh, but knowing that I wasn't suffering any more than Jesus actually helped me um, cope uh, better, help me uh, understand my own suffering and relate it uh, to Jesus and encourage me, it pushed me, it inspired me to become closer to Jesus. Thank you, Ben. And are there specific practices or ways of life that can help us or he does he sharing in Christ's suffering? Are there specific things we can be doing every day that will help us to understand day by day the sufferings of Christ? Uh, one uh, good way uh, to understand uh, the sufferings of, of Christ would be uh, for you to uh, get your computer open or get a, a book and start a journal and talk to Jesus each day about the world and the life, being more educated about the suffering of people on earth, watching uh, documentaries and understanding the slavery and the trafficking and the sexual abuse and prostitution and the porn industry, uh, all different uh, documentaries made by people who are suffering uh, would increase your knowledge on the way people are suffering and uh, further uh, increase uh, your understanding of the way that Christ suffers. Um, so journaling and doing more research. Uh, point number three is having voice-to-voice -voice, uh, conversations with Jesus where you're not journaling, you're just having a conversation with Jesus is, is another way. But there are ways uh, uh, keeping a journal each day and doing research uh, would uh, really uh, benefit you as a listener. Thank you. Thank you, Benjamin. This question is for you, Michael. Can sharing in Christ's suffering lead to spiritual growth or transformation? Yeah, so I'm just learning about the subject uh, myself. I went uh, through uh, rejection and loneliness and so understanding uh, the rejection that 
Christ feels and uh, the loneliness that he feels that uh, Matthew uh, heard an interview uh, with uh, a bodyguard of mine and the bodyguard said Michael was the loneliest person he'd ever known and uh, and it's true I was very lonely so understanding that uh, facet and dimension of Jesus' life on earth that he's very lonely and the fact that he's still lonely even in heaven uh, and that may be a surprise to many of you on heaven but Many of you listening in heaven are only looking at yourself, only looking at your own happiness, not uh, so concerned about Jesus' happiness or suffering. So uh, it's, uh, it's a good thing to um, uh, do some investigation uh, into Christ's suffering and it'll start to transform you. It's a new transformation. It's a new source of knowledge for me and uh, I look forward to investigating further uh, so that I can become more intimate uh, with Jesus and uh, he can talk face to face to me about everything that concerns him. Thank you, Michael. You mentioned loneliness. That of it, you were very lonely when you were on her. And so many people are also experiencing loneliness currently on her. What should be our approach to loneliness? So I, I feel that one key to uh, your uh, loneliness is learn to uh, journal or speak back and forth to Jesus, that Jesus can be your friend and you can discipline yourself. If you discipline yourself uh, to uh, speak to Jesus, you can ask Jesus to introduce you to another saint in heaven, uh, someone else uh, in the Bible, even myself, and speak back and forth to them. Uh, Matthew, uh, well, I haven't uh, got a suggestion using Matthew's voice and Matthew's intellect. Matthew hasn't got a suggestion uh, for you to find friends because uh, he finds it. Very hard to find friends. Uh, uh, it seems that uh, in his regular conversations with strangers, he tends to turn strangers off by saying weird things. Uh, so um, hasn't got any suggestions. Uh, one one uh, way uh, to curb the, the feeling of loneliness is to join uh, certain groups and uh, certain uh you know, uh, fills the study. So for um, for a little while, Matthew went to a group called Toastmasters, which was a public speaking organisation and gave him an outing every second Thursday to meet like-minded people and speak. Uh, but he moved away from that. God moved him away from that. And uh, he hasn't uh, got uh, many friends, uh, but... Um, but uh, the world can be a lonely place, and uh, and uh, even as popular as as I was and well known as I was, uh, the more well known I was, the harder it was for me to make friends, because everyone wanted something from me. Everyone wanted to be around me, not because they loved me, but because they loved themselves. So mm -hmm. it's not surprising to me that. Jesus uh, could uh, be the head of the universe and uh, the king of kings and yet lonely. Um, it seems, you know, to many of the people uh, listening to this, both in heaven and on earth, that they would find it shocking that Jesus hasn't got a lot of friends. Uh, but uh, it all stems around uh, the sufferings of Christ, that not many people want to enter the darkness and, uh, be overcome by the dark feelings of what Jesus uh, thinks about. Thank you. This next question is for John. John, so based on your experience of living for 40 years on heart and you spent so many years now in heaven, what do you think really matters for people that will be watching this or listening to it in the world? What should we prioritize in our life? How should we live ready? every day uh the beatles had a song matthew's not sure 
who wrote the song, but the Beatles had a song that said, all you need is love. Da, 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 da. All you need is love. Christ's message, the message of Christ is, if if you love God, love your fellow man. And uh, you, you can't be doing anything wrong when you're loving other people. And um, some people have a misconstruction of love. Some people think that um, taking a girl and living with a girl outside of marriage is love. And it's a sad thing these days that uh, a, a big percentage of youth and young people are living with their partners rather than uh, committing in marriage to them. But it's understandable that they don't want the pressure of marriage. But um, it's important that uh, you live your life so that you're an expression of love. Uh, it's important Psalm 1-3 uh, says that he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers who gives its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So that's uh, an image of the tree of life, and um, you should be structured in such a way that your tree has always got roots going out to the Holy Spirit, It's always been fed by the Holy Spirit, always been directed by the Holy Spirit, that uh, you've always got fruit, you've always got something to offer other people, and um, there's no drought in your world that no matter if water source dries up, uh, rain stops uh, raining, that you can still be sourced by the river and, and your leaf never goes brown, it never withers. And whatever you turn your hand to prospers. Uh, that's the picture of the tree of life. And most of that is uh, having fruit that's available uh, for other people to pick. Um, and that's like a full expression of your love. That's uh, like a full expression of love, that you can be a vessel of love uh, to other people. And so many people have strong doctrines and strong ideas and strong understandings of the Bible, and they'll argue over what a, a scripture verse means, but then they're, they're not uh, dealing with love and compassion and humility with someone else. They're speaking out of pride and self-righteousness, and uh, that's not love. Love love does not argue. Uh, lo love is not jealous. Love is not unkind. Love, love takes no joy in, um, in suffering. Um, so the love chapter in 1 Corinthians 13 is a good understanding of what love is. Love never fails. Love doesn't give up. Um, the, these are all uh, attributes of a love that the world sadly doesn't know a lot about. Love never fails. Um, so many uh, marriages fail and people say that they don't love their partner anymore. How can you... How can you love someone and then not love them anymore? How do you do that? Do you, do you turn your love to hate and you begin to hate the person? Um, so um, so uh, the most important thing uh, in this world is is to love and, uh, and understanding Jesus' 50 commandments is how to love 50 different ways and how to understand Jesus' 54 parables is him teaching on how to love and how to do the work of the kingdom and how to be part of the kingdom of God. Uh, so understanding what Jesus teaches and applying it is applying love to other people and applying love to God. Um, and uh, most people really aren't interested in serving God or uh, or, or doing what Jesus taught, they're not really interested in understanding what Jesus taught because more people would research what the parables actually mean or research uh, how to practice the 50 commands of Jesus. But they're not interested in that, and that's a sad thing. Thank you, John. I think that's really, really powerful how, how you were able to express it. The 50, the 50 commandments, the 54 parables is all loving, is always coming back to love. 
but loving in a different way, being a vessel of love. That's what I could pick from, and I think that's really powerful. And for people listening in heaven, how can they be a vessel of love or how can they be better in loving other people? Um, so uh, heaven is a community of people who were saved. Uh, heaven is full of people that are never uh, going to go to hell. Uh, it, there's not anything you can do in heaven that will send you to hell. But there are a lot of things you can do for love. There's, there's a lot of sacrifices you can make uh, in heaven uh, to better the life of other people. Um, so heaven knows who you are. Heaven knows uh, your registration on your iPad. So um, there's there's a, a choice now coming onto your screen. I want to change heaven. And uh, you can press that button if you agree. And it'll tell you a job and training and things that uh, you can do to improve the lives of other people. Many people aren't so much selfish and um even though uh, many people in heaven are complacent, they do that because they've got a lack of information and lack of knowledge. Uh, if you press this button on your iPad screen now, uh, that'll tell you the knowledge of uh, creative things that you're born to do and things that heaven uh, knows that you're prepared to do. And all you've got to do is do the courses and do the jobs and make the steps and do the steps that, are recorded on your individual answer and uh, you'll change heaven yourself. So um, many of Christ's teachings uh, can be assimilated into your life in heaven, uh, but many of them uh, were talking about uh, life on earth. Uh, but um, you'll find uh, plenty to do uh, if you press that button. Thank you, John. This question is for Ben. Ben, if you had an opportunity to relieve your life on earth based on your understanding of heaven now and even um, including the sufferings that you went through, how would you live it differently? I wouldn't live it differently. I, I lived everything that I was meant to live and I wasn't meant to find out what I did find out uh, until I got to heaven. I spent my life uh, trying to understand Jesus and trying to grow close to Jesus. Uh, I tried uh, many different things in business and in life with relationships, but uh, the cards fell how they fell, and I wasn't uh, to be the winner of the poker game. And it turns out winning was uh, was just carving my relationship uh, with God and developing my theology and understanding of God. And uh, when the training was done, uh, my life was over and that was I consider my life on earth part one and my life in heaven part two I entered into an apprenticeship on earth learned everything I needed to learn uh, to become the great person I am in heaven so there was no mistakes and um, I wouldn't change anything I, I loved you the very best I could love you I, I was the best father that I could be and I continue to be uh, a loving husband to you. I continue to be a loving uh, father to my father and you want to teach uh, your children how to talk to me and uh, you can even have a session with your three children and Matthew can bring my voice uh, to them and they can have a session talking to me. But there really isn't any change that I would have made. Um, I'm happy uh, on reflection of my life, um, uh, if I if if I was to change anything, uh, I would have taken you on more trips out uh, to restaurants and had more memories uh, between you and the children. That's the only thing that I would change. That, um, but uh, I know that you're resistant to going out and treating ourselves and. Um, so I did it as often as I could, but if I was to change anything, I'd have more memories for you. Thank you, Benjamin. Going back to John, what's your final word? What do you want people to take from this um, message, part one and part two? 
to them. Uh, I want uh, people to understand that Jesus wasn't just a teacher. Uh, Jesus is uh, is God. Jesus is the Son of God and was uh, existing uh, before uh, creation, was existing before the earth and the population of the earth. Jesus really is the boss. He's the last person that should be lonely. He's the last person who should be rejected. Uh, he's the last person that should be a cuss word, uh, a swear word uh, in the world. He, his name shouldn't be blasphemed by people, but his name is blasphemed by people by the bad example Christians have made of him. Uh, the the non-Christians, the people who don't attend church, uh, use his name as a cuss word because they're so disgusted with you. Um, and uh, so uh, you can change. There, there's a book called The Narrow Way, the parables of Jesus made simple. There's a book called The Narrow Way, The Commandments of Jesus. Uh, you can read those two books and the other three books uh, in that series. There's another book called The Gospel of Love. You can read those books and put those uh, books into application. You can start to apply those books and change, change your life. There's another uh, book called Influencing Your World for Christ, and that's how to live your life as a Christian so you're a good influence on other people who aren't Christians. And there's five books in that series that uh, you can get. Um, and uh, so if you got those 10 books and applied those 10 books, you can really make a difference. But I'm aware that uh, there's a lot of people uh, listening to this that, that, you know, maybe five to 10 of you that are listening to the end of part two and, You've heard me list those two books, and I honestly, statistically, I doubt that any one of you uh, will actually download that book because you've actually got to spend your time, spend your money, and and have the discipline to play up uh, those books. Um, and uh, that's a real shame, but it's sad. And uh, but uh, that's uh, my final words. Um, I, I hope uh, that uh, many of you would uh, take the opportunity to learn how to hear from God, how to hear God's voice is Matthew's book. Uh, I encourage you to uh, download that book and learn to speak to God and learn to speak to Jesus and journal with them and come to understand the heart of Jesus. Matthew's got a book called Seven Keys to Intimacy with Jesus. Uh, that book will show you how to get close to Jesus. I really encourage uh, you listeners to do that, uh, but then the choice is up to you. Thank you, John. Michael, have you got any other song that you're going to release anytime soon? Um, we're uh, planning on uh, releasing a song every two weeks. Uh, so uh, we're on like a schedule. Um, one of our favorite things in heaven to do is to write songs. And um, I used to write more. Uh, I spend time with children, uh, teaching children music in a school. Um, but I used to write more and release more songs. But me and John and uh, Ben have decided that quality is better and uh you know, uh, we got two songs or one song split into two. Um, we got 42 and 40. We want to get the one that's 42. We want to um, we want to get songs under 40, uh, 30 or 26 and have a really deep song, really popular. Um, so um, getting a number one in heaven is something that Michael knows how to do. Um, but uh, getting uh, a deeper song to number five may be something that uh, it's number five and it's performed in the throne room, but it's deeper than a number one song. So there's different things that we want to do um, and, uh, and uh, we'll be doing them. Thank you, Michael. I believe you guys are going to achieve all you want to do because you're all driven. So what is your final word as well for people that will be watching this on heart or listening in heaven? Uh, all You Need Is Love is, is a song that uh, perfectly 
uh, represents uh, what you need to do uh, in heaven. Uh, if you press that button before, uh, it'll tell you what your next steps are in heaven uh, to become everything God wants you to be. On earth, uh, you could uh, go to Matthew's website, which is found in the description tag uh, underneath uh, this video, and uh, you could uh, order yourself a prophetic destiny blueprint, and uh, you could tell Matthew if you're a Christian or not or a churchgoer or not. And that'll outline nine things that uh, you're called to do with your life. And it would be very good if you understood that and was able to have uh, Facebook conversations with Matthew too uh, around uh, those nine things that you're destined to do. Uh, so that's what I'd encourage you to do. Thank you. And Ben, what would you like to say as well as your final words? So uh, I'd like to uh, say uh, to you, uh, to Lou, that I'm very impressed with your questions and you actually did have help uh, with uh, yourself uh, getting the questions and uh, delight, I was delighted uh, with your questions and uh, just as... Uh, we're good at writing music. You're good at writing questions and you're a good interviewer. This is a, a good podcast. Uh, if uh, if 500,000 people were viewing uh, this podcast on earth, you'd be very popular, but you can rest assured that there's more than 500,000 people watching this podcast in heaven. And so you're having a great effect on us up here. Um, and uh, so many people talk to me about how much they love you and how they love your questions and how uh, you dig up really uh, important information out of the saints. And you're not the only one that goes back and listens to uh, interviews. Uh, all the saints in heaven uh, continue to go back and re-listen to the interviews. And we've got... Um, We've got a YouTube like different in heaven where it says the figures uh, of all the views of the videos and then uh, it's got figures of unique visitors and sometimes the unique visitors are like 200,000 and the views are like 800,000. Like, it's like people have watched the video four times, you can tell from the figure. Uh, so... There's a lot of repeat uh, listeners to these videos and count it that you, you're you re-listening to videos and they're encouraging you a lot. Well, many saints in heaven uh, re-listen to the videos and you really encourage them. Uh, so I just want to give you some personal feedback that uh, you're really making a difference. And Matthew really couldn't uh, be doing this. Uh, uh, you motivate him and encourage him and uh, you uh, push him, and he really couldn't uh, be doing this uh, without uh, your uh, desire to do it. Uh, he he would just uh, be languishing and making one video a day about nonsensical subjects and wouldn't really be making much of a difference on earth. And uh, you're making such a tremendous difference to heaven, and so good on you. Thank you. Thank you, and Matthew, have you got any question? That's me, Dom. No, that's okay. So if you liked uh, uh, this uh, video, please uh, like the video. In other words, if you watch to, to this place in the video, uh, press the, the vote up uh, button on this video. Uh, if uh, you... I've heard some things that you want to comment on. Please comment. And uh, if uh, you're new to Matthew's channel and you want to watch more videos like this, please press subscribe. God bless.